Um, welcome to our session on case studies. My name is Carolyn. I am the Associate Director of Instruction in the Library. Uh, and my name is Elizabeth St. Clair, and I'm one of the Reference and Instruction Librarians here. Um, I work mostly with undergraduate School of Management students. And I work with a lot of um, doctoral students and the Masters in Leadership. And so today we're going to talk about case studies, um, where you can get them, why they're so hard to find, and how you can use the resources that we have here at CDU to create your own unique case study that fits your needs. So what is a case study? Most people will be familiar with them. Um, this image shows kind of the standard. Um, Harvard, Stanford, those are big schools that make these case studies. They're typically documents, um, a lot of reading for students, um, and they consist of a lot of different parts, and each part usually ends with problems and points for discussions. And so they'll talk about an issue or something that's going on in the industry, and then usually at the end, there'll be questions for your students or questions for a class discussion or ideas for assignments, something like that. Um, they have enough information for the reader to think about the problems and issues, and those would be related to your class. And then they reflect on situations that students might encounter in their future careers, and that also meet the course outcomes. So what you might not be as familiar with is why are decent case studies so hard to find? A lot of them have proprietary information. And so if you, you know, in business, if you want to study a company, um, sometimes they won't release that information. If it's a smaller private company, they don't need to report out a lot of their statistics and information. And so they don't like to release those. And so sometimes companies will create case studies for training, um, for internal documents, stuff like that. And so we wouldn't be able to have that, to get access to those. Um, and then case studies are often written by paid professionals. So they're expensive to make. You know, Harvard, Stanford, all those big schools, they pay people to write those case studies. And it's expensive. Um, it takes a lot of time and research. And so they want to get, you know, a little bit of money back on that investment. And so both of those qualities lead to them being behind paywalls. Um, so at the library, we do subscribe to some collections of case studies. Um, there are ways for you to make students pay for the case studies. But that is a cost that isn't always necessary. And so being behind a paywall um, shouldn't stop you from having case studies in your class and we'll teach you how. And so MIT is working on a new standard for case studies. Um, these are online. Um, they're in beta, so they're still in testing. But they're trying something new and innovative. So right now they have four. They're primarily business focused. Um, they're very specific to the needs that MIT had. And so they're about real estate, developing, um, topics like that. So I'm going to go through one of them and just show you kind of what they look like. Just keep in mind that MIT has a lot of money. Um, so they have a really high production value and they look amazing. Um, so let's see what that looks like. So here's the first one. It's about developers in Panama. And so you open it up, it has this beautiful video. They have case kits, they have teacher kits, um, all kinds of stuff. All right, so um, you'll usually get an introduction to what's going on. And you scroll through, and it's a bit more like a typical case study, a bit of reading for the students. Um, they have charts that talk about short-term, long-term goals, what the community is like. And you can go to the next page. They have more videos, which I'm just pausing because you wouldn't be able to hear the audio um, in Collaborate. But they have um, videos of the community, what the town is like. And so these are really interesting for students. They go through, everything looks really nice, um, but they're still getting information. They're still learning. So there's more reading with some statistic about the area. And as you go through, as the students are reading these things, um, there are activities, too, and there are quizzes. And so if you get to this point, um, 
they will ask a student a question. What is the household income in 2010 for the three districts in Panama? Um, and they have to answer those questions. And so that's something that you know, is really good for students. They learn, it's scaffolded, it's learned in small pieces, and they have all the information here that they need. There's another video. They also have these menus here that have other items that students can explore. And these are also usually connected to quizzes. And so they'll have, um, you know, maps, kind of other images. They'll have, you know, these are profiles of people you can scroll over. They'll have um, interviews with people in the field. And so it's um, a really interesting way to show kind of the, the potential of an idea. And something that we like about these um, particularly is how sort of dynamic they are and you aren't just slapping a piece of paper down in front of a student um, and giving them, you're giving them something that they can engage with more and will keep them more interested in and give them a bigger picture of what's going on with the issue that you're exploring. And they can also go through it at their own pace. It's broken up in little pieces, um, so they can do certain sections, do the quiz, and then kind of think about it or, or leave um, and come back. And so there's a lot of, there are a lot of really interesting things in these cases, a lot of neat activities, a lot of neat technology. Um, and so we're going to talk about ways that you can replicate something like this at CityU. Um, and there are a lot of options. Obviously, we don't have kind of the power that MIT would have to make, you know, this, you know, quality. But um, all of these things that I'm showing you that are here in MIT, we also have at CityU. So um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So reaching the standard at CityU, like Carolyn said. Um, that those clearly involved a lot of coding and building from scratch. Um, but we can use the same principles used in those MIT case studies um, and apply them in our Blackboard shells using those tools plus resources that the library offers. Um, so in the MIT case studies that we just showed, they used a bunch of different types of resources um, and combined them in a way to make a dynamic case study. And that's what you would do for your class. So we have a list of things here that are available through the library and online that you can combine to create a dynamic case study. So you can include reports, so financial, consumer, industry reports. We have articles. You can include videos. Um, I know we're speaking specifically, you know, kind of focusing on business case studies right now, but um, in our psychology and counseling classes, we have a few databases that have um, you know, counseling and therapy transcripts and videos that you can use to create case studies for those types of classes as well. Um, and peppered throughout this, you can also use quizzes and discussion prompts. That would be something that you would find in your Blackboard shell. Um, and then, you know, other materials like charts and images. Uh, these all can be used together to create, like, a really cool case study. And what I like most about building your own like this is that, um, you aren't relying on somebody else's work to kind of shoehorn it into your class objectives. You can build it specifically to meet your specific class needs. Um, and the other thing I think is cool is if you see something in the news that you find particularly interesting. Um, and like I, I see things all the time, I'd be like, oh, that'd be a great lesson for my students. That would be really good illustrated point to use in class to meet, you know, the needs in module two or something, then you can actually build something out of that current event or news item. So like I think about that Cambridge Analytica data issue going on with Facebook right now and the big scandal. Um, instead of waiting for somebody to write a case study about it three years down the road, uh, you could start gathering information on that topic. So. Um, you know, we have a Homeland and Digital Security database that you could pull a lot of information about data breaches and why these are a problem. You can pull articles about uh, 
election influencing and all that stuff. And you could build a really cool case study around this very new and relevant issue that students are interested in. I think another one that we talked about yesterday was um, Starbucks ha has a new initiative where they want to make all their cups recyclable. Well, that's really interesting. It's local. Starbucks is from Seattle. Students will be interested in that. Um, it talks about ethics. It talks about sustainability. Um, and you might know someone that works at Starbucks, or you might work at Starbucks. At City U, we have the advantage of having practitioners as teachers. And so that's a really good opportunity to record a video with someone that you know that works for a company. And we can help you with that. City U has resources to help you with video. So you can interview them quickly and throw that in a case with other um, another one of these documents and kind of make students think about something that's local, that's happening right now. Yeah, and so and we talked about sort of the standard, prior standard case studies, um, and a lot of complaints that we hear when we find items for classes for instructors and course managers is this is very dated. And then we talk about, it's like, we're sick of making students read about dip and dots, right? It's right. that dip and dots case study that keeps going around. And there are much more recent and relevant things that I think that we can give our students and make learning for them more relevant to their lives today. So Carolyn and I have made um, just kind of an example sort of template of what this can look like in Blackboard um, by combining different materials to create a dynamic case study. So we're going to show you that. I'm going to pull it up real quick. So the one we created was on Target Canada. A few years ago, in 2012, I believe, Target decided to expand their business pursuits into Canada. And it failed spectacularly. They, um, they bought up a bunch of real estate. They expanded too fast. They had all kinds of problems. And they just collapsed. And they closed all their stores in Canada after only a few years. Great case study for business students. Um, so what, and I want to show here real fast, is that um, to create this, we did the um, module uh, option in Blackboard. But if you find you don't like those, that's perfectly fine. This would work just as well in a folder. Um, so it's really up to you. And that's another great thing about building your own case study this way, is that you get to choose how it's organized, and you find that certain students may respond better to discussion boards than quizzes, then you can make those changes. So I'm going to open this up. And just to start with, what we've done here is we've included an invisible photo, uh, folder for an instructor guide. Uh, all that is is uh, if you're course manager and you've built this into your class, you might want to include a few notes for your instructor about how this might go. Um, these sort of invisible folders to students are a great way to do that. But so how we've organized this here, and of course you can organize yours however you want, is you might want to start with a bit of instructions on how to go about this module for your students. So you know what's expected <laughs> of them, etc. Then we've given a, you would give a brief introduction to the case. So we've included a video here and a timeline of what happened to Target. Uh, we've included you know, a chart from Statista, one of our databases, um, just some general materials, um, and then following it up with a quiz. So you might include a couple of questions about what the students learned. Um, you could even take specific charts or specific company earnings and ask questions for students to make sure that they know how to read them. Um, and then we've gone down and broken this up into a couple things. So the two major areas in which Target Canada failed was in their supply chain. Uh, they had some big technology problems and a data breach that caused some issues with their supply chain. So shelves were left empty uh, for several months after their opening. Uh, and the second one was uh, understanding the Canadian consumer. So they made a lot of assumptions about their Canadian consumer that kind of backfired on them. Um, so that has to do with marketing and international business. So we just broke up this case study into these two main topic areas. We've included articles from the library. We've included data, charts, and videos. And then the quizzes to kind of assess your students' learning. And then at the end, um, 
we've included a discussion prompt. So you might hear, you might want to use the discussion to engage with your students, figure out how they like the case, uh, tie the case to an assignment, um, and just wrap up the thing as a whole. Of course, this isn't like a static template. You can play around with it and um, build it to your particular class needs. Yeah, I think yesterday someone suggested maybe having the, each of these pieces be a part of an assignment that kind of scaffolds to the end of the class. So that's something that you could think of, um, having all the different pieces that would then, you know, help them find equivalent pieces for the, the assignment that's due at the end. Um, I know in a lot of, you know, business classes they do a marketing report, a company report, or they write a report about a business that they'd like to start. So this could be a good example for that. Yeah, so that was just a very basic example of what you can do on Blackboard. Um, but next we're going to kind of talk like, you know, why would we do something like this? And we've said this over the course of the presentation, but you can tailor these to meet your specific class objective. A lot of problem with traditional case studies is that you're sort of taking this thing that's happened 15 years ago and you say, oh, I need a case for my class. Well, this one kind of fits. I'm going to put it in there. Um, and, you know, you can do it that way, but we feel that by building new case studies with new and relevant information, you can more accurately fit your class objectives and goals. It also encourages critical thinking for your students, and most case studies do, but this really kind of helps them see around an issue and see the different things that can in impact um, a real life situation. Uh, it encourages problem solving skills. It engages students more. Um, instead of just, you know, them reading a single piece of paper, it gets them using different skills. Um, and it also introduces them to a variety of library resources. So a lot of students don't know that they can get company reports. They don't know where to get statistics. And you're providing those directly in the course shell and showing them how they can work together to build a cohesive whole. So it sets a really good example for your students um, in their work. Yeah, I think we strongly believe that if you show them good resources, you will get good resources back in those assignments. And so they'll see kind of the standard that you've set in the courses as either an instructor or as a course manager, and they'll know that that information is out there and that they can find it in a reliable way. A lot of students will pick a company and just put that into Google and put in, you know, target SWOT or like target report. and if they're lucky, they might find one, but it's not the same as if they use the databases. So just showing them that that's there. Um, that there, that yeah. there's really high quality stuff available to them. Uh, I think it's a really good lesson. Um, so how can we help? So we're telling you, you should do all these things, all these things, all these things. But um, we want to let you know that we can help you build these in your class. So we can help you brainstorm cases to use. Uh, if you want to talk to your kid, you know, your students about pricing or you want to talk to your students about supply chain, we can help you figure out current issues that would help meet those goals, those learning goals. Um, and of course, like the very obvious one, then we can help you locate articles, reports, and other materials to fill in the gaps. Um, and finally, we can create research guides for students. So. If you want students as a part of this case study project to go out and find a company report, we can help build things in your class that teaches them how to find a company report, et cetera. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I guess we could exit and show. Yeah. We'll pull up the that one. Yeah. So if you just want to, oh, we have a few. Oh. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> we can do these for accounting, too. So, yeah, go ahead. If someone were to adopt one of the MIT case studies, mm -hmm. recognizing there's only four, and the students take the quizzes, and quizzes are really just feedback to the student about how well they're doing. They don't go to the back of the memo, right? Right, yeah. The, so the question was, if, uh, if you choose one of the MIT case studies, 
does the information from the quizzes come back to the faculty member? So no, the quizzes in MIT are just embedded in MIT, and you actually can't continue with that specific page unless you get the answer right. Um, so I had a lot of trouble with them because I, I tried to do some of them just to see what would happen if I got them right, and I was never able to. But <laughs> I'm not a business student or a real estate student. Um, but we could find a way to maybe replicate the questions that they have into Blackboard so that you could say to students, you know, come back and do the quiz in Blackboard, or maybe like you could do a discussion board like what were your answers, how did you find them, you know, show your work kind of thing. Um, and, yeah. and you can like, they can just be for zero points as well. So if you just want to do the quizzes just to see, you know, where students stand, that's an option as well. So it doesn't actually have to be, you know, a graded assessment either. Does anybody? Yes, please come see me, Karen. We can work on this. <laughs> So, um, are there any any more questions? Happy to answer. Yeah. Make a comment. Having just read the student satisfaction survey and uh, heard about, seen many comments where students are saying they're tired of discussion boards. It seems like a really nice way to package content that gives them a little bit more depth of engagement in the course than just reading a question and answering. Yeah, it gives them some variety, and if you look at the exemplary course um, and some of the EA, some of the other EAD courses, if you get a chance to look in those, they have a lot of engagement. Every week there isn't a discussion board. You know, there might be one one week, and then the other week they go do some kind of different activity. So this could be one of the options in that week. You could do part of the case and then go back to the discussion and do another part of the case. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options. And I really like, too, the idea that you mentioned earlier of where you could even, doing a case this way, you could split it up over the whole course and you could package it up in little different areas. So like the Target Canada case study has so many dynamics to why it failed. Um, so that may meet several objectives in your class and you could split them up over several weeks and then at the end they come to a conclusion together as a class on what target could have changed. Um, so I feel that they're very engaging. Any last second questions? I'm just going to plug, because I'm also a moderator for this, I'm going to plug the survey um, that we posted in the chat box if you could fill it out. Uh, please remember to choose your presenter, but um, we would really appreciate it if you filled out the survey for us, and thanks for listening. Yeah, come um, visit us. And yeah, email we'll us at the panel. Well, if you want to implement this in your class, and we'd be more than happy to help you build them. <laughs>